time now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street with financial expert Rob Black. And Rob, joining us uh, on this Wednesday morning where the markets look pretty positive, uh, at least to start with anyway. I guess we got some economic data this morning and more on the way this week. Yes, um, the PPI, the producer price index, showed that inflation is still there. So that's probably going to bode poorly for the CPI, which is tomorrow the consumer price. It's a basket of goods that you and I may consume, like a banana, like a pound of chicken. It prices it on a month to month basis, and we see how much more we're paying for rent and things like that. And then on Friday, we get the job uh, the re retail report. So it's a big week of data. If you want the Fed to slow down and pivot, stop raising interest rates. Stop Stop corporate borrowing costs going up, government borrowing costs going up, student loan debt costs going up. We got to see the inflation numbers get broken. Um, so we're not there yet. We saw mortgage rates hit 6.8%. First, uh, that's a, a high, a 15 year high. That means real estate prices are going to still continue to come down. United Airlines said today, James, that um, flights to Europe this summer uh, are expected to be 20% higher. They were this summer 20% higher than 2019. So they're doing everything they can to get more planes open to fly to, to Europe because we want to go more so than even pre-pandemic. And expect some job cuts out of Intel. Um, <clears throat> That is what we truly, truly need to put in a market bottom. We need big corporations to lay off lots of their workforce, and that will kill inflation pretty quickly. Boy, it sounds harsh to say that, though, that more people need to be laid off for us to start getting better. That really is how it has to go, huh? In my world of 25 years experience, if we want to go to market highs again, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the way it's going to have to happen. Wow. Okay. And I'm also seeing headlines this morning. This one, for instance, Labor Department moves to change worker classification rule. That doesn't bode well, I don't think, for like gig companies, rideshare companies. And even small businesses who rely on those <laughs> delivery services like DoorDash and Uber and Lyft. So the Labor Department's proposing a new proposal. <laughs> it's the right way of saying that. And ultimately, we're trying to figure out if you work for Uber, Lyft, or DoorDash, are you integral to the company? If you are, then you're an employee. If you're not and you can work your own schedule whenever you want to, you're a contractor. To me, this is really a thing about do corporations have, uh, do Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash give healthcare to these employees? And does it stop the employees from unionizing? Are they contractors or employees? It's a big question. It's about a 30% cost difference to a company like an Uber, Lyft, or DoorDash employee versus contractor. And again, I, I don't see a right answer here mm -hmm. because it's going to mean you and I pay higher fares for Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash. You and I are going to be paying higher delivery costs. Right. The corporation will pass the cost on to us. We know that. But is it good for the worker? It's probably pretty good for the worker who's going to change from contractor to a worker status. Yeah, but I know a lot of people who do that kind of work, and they enjoy the fact that they can pick up a shift here and there and don't have to be told by the company, your start time is 6 a.m., whether you like it or not. I mean, that's the trade-off, right? If you become an employee, then the company can tell you when you start, when you stop, when you take vacations, and when you don't. That's right. Okay. And uh, I had to take a flight out of 6 a.m. out of Marin uh, down to SFO, and I couldn't get an Uber. They just don't have enough drivers who want to work that 6 a.m. shift. Okay. So I had to figure out emergency plans. Interesting. Okay. And then lastly, Netflix. Uh, they've been talking about this ad-supported tier. I guess we have some kind of idea when that's going to start becoming available, huh? Yeah. Disney and Netflix are both going to introduce their ad-supported tier in November. Um, what it's going to look like is 7 to $9 a month, very similar to Hulu but it's gonna be four minutes of commercials. I don't know if they're gonna put them into the movies versus the TV shows. We haven't figured that out yet. Mm. It'll be a different experience for sure. A network, obviously ABC, NBC, CBS, Cron, for instance, we typically do about 16 minutes an hour. So Netflix will be at about four minutes after losing basically over a million plus subscribers. They're trying to figure out how to pull in billions of dollars in advertising, a very big pivot in their business model. Oh, I'll ask you then, what would you rather? Would you rather have those four minutes sprinkled throughout the program, or do you want to see a four-minute block up front and get it out of the way? Um, I, I don't really have a good opinion on that, because yeah. it feels like whenever I'm watching something that's streamed, mm -hmm. um, I'm pausing it a lot, and I'm making my own commercials to go get popcorn, and my own commercials to go get uh, sodas and things like that. I think I'd probably want it up front, because once I start the show, I don't want anything taking me out of it until I'm ready to to step out of it. We'll see. You see why this is a uh, yeah. big issue for Netflix. It it's is. a big pivot, and it's going to change how James enjoys uh, Disney shows on Marvel. All right. All right, Rob, thank you. As always, we'll chat with you again tomorrow. 
we'll get your questions and comments in so he can talk about them when he joins us once more. Facebook, Twitter, you see his handles there. Email him directly. He's happy to chat with you. Rob at robblack.com.